so many times uh, on Dominate the Diamond to help with tryouts. Some coaches, it's their first tryout ever. Some coaches have been running it for years and they just, they really haven't, they really haven't mastered the process and how to go about doing it. And we've been doing it now for 20 years. Uh, we have 14 teams, but we help little leagues run these. We help teams run these. We pretty much travel all around and help. There's no one way or cookie cutter way to run a tryout, but we've got a pretty good blueprint that we feel is really going to help you out. So let's get started. So how do you run the perfect practice? The first thing perfect you have tryout. to do, perfect tryout, sorry. Um, the first thing we have to do is we have to prep and plan, right? So we have to prep and plan. What do I mean by that? By prepping and planning, we need to make sure that we have an email sign up. We have a registration link and it has all the information that we want to capture from that ball player. Um, we want to know ahead of time, how many kids do we have? What's their age, their birthday? What positions do they play? Their primary and secondary positions. We also want to make sure that they fill out a waiver, uh, their shirt size. And the reason why we do the shirt size is we have zone shirts and on the back, we have a number and on the front, we have a number. So they're like $7 or little dry fit shirts, but it makes it so much easier. So the kids walk out of there with a cool zone tryout t-shirt that they're wearing after the tryouts that they're proud of. Um, if you want, you can do marathon numbers. A lot of people will do that um, on their front and on their back. So any way that you feel that you want to capture who they are when they come to your tryout. Also getting all their contact information, their email phone number, again, everything that you can think of that you want from that ball player. Make sure it's a mom and a dad's email. Make sure it's their phone numbers because that's how you're going to communicate with them after the tryouts. So you want to make sure that there's no broken emails because you're going to try to get in touch with somebody and you can't get in touch with them. So make sure all that stuff is done well. So that's the prep and plan. So next up, Coach Steve's going to talk about preparing your coaching staff. Yeah, guys, preparing the staff is huge. Um, you know, we sit down a week, sometimes two weeks prior to the tryout just to go over the flow of the day, right? We we have our, our full-time coaches. We have part-time coaches. We have the, the coach that's going to be coaching that specific age group that's trying out. We have uh, some of our high school helpers there just to have all hands on deck because there's a lot of moving pieces the, the, the day of the tryout. So, you know, we go through the breakdown of the day. We go through who's running what stations, who's got what responsibilities. Um, you know, sometimes our high school catchers will be there just to catch bullpens. Sometimes guys are going to be there just to catch balls at first base from the infielders. Um, you can see here, and Duke mentioned it before, but what software are we using? So we use Team Genius. Team Genius is an app that we use that pretty much collects every bit of data that you can imagine at the tryout. It, it goes back into the planning phase that Duke was talking about earlier, where, you know, we update uh, constantly, we add the, the, the player's photo in, we add in, you know, the age group that they're trying, trying out for, and it, it itemizes each team and each, uh, you know, specific age group to where we know exactly what, what their name is, what number they are. And then we're able to go in and then make comments, um, rate the players from one to five. Uh, the comments piece is huge. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but it's very detailed. You know, on the left, we'll have categories like, you know, catching comments, pop times, home to first time, infield comments, infield grade. And it, it, it covers A to Z, everything that you're looking to, to record that day. And then at the end, it, uh, it basically puts together an entire spreadsheet of, of the players that are ranked at, at, at that certain skill set. So it'll take the kids and put the fastest kid up top to the slowest kid at the bottom. It'll take the kids' uh, ball exit speed and rank them top to bottom. And it'll, it'll, uh, it makes our life a lot easier because then at the end, there's an evaluation form that it helps, uh, you know, compile or compiles it for us. So then when we're doing our evals, when we sit down with the players and parents, we pull out their team genius sheet and we go through the entire evaluation. It's got all their rankings. It's got all their measurable numbers. It's got their scores. It's got the coaches comments. And it really makes our lives a lot easier. You know, that being said, there's a lot of uh, little leagues that will use just pen and paper. And that's perfectly fine too. Um, we use team genius because we have over 300 kids try out. And again, it makes our lives so much easier throughout the process uh but old school pen and paper or you know google docs 
whatever you guys want to do, sharing it, you know, typing it down and, and sharing it via email. Um, but you have to talk to your guys about who's responsible for recording what on that specific day. You know, the other thing we talk about with our staff is how many players are we looking for, right? If we have, uh, you know, 35 kids trying out for an age group, are we going to try to have two teams or are we just looking for the top 12? Um, how many returners do we have? So how many kids are coming back from the previous season? I'll talk about this a little bit later, but um, we have two days of tryouts. So day one is our, is our eval day for the new players. And day two is going to be an invite back day where we invite the players that we liked from day one to then play a huge simulated game against the guys that are currently on our roster or maybe was on our team the previous year. Um, but again, those are all questions that you have to talk, talk amongst your staff with, but uh, you know, you can't, you can't plan and prepare enough. We've done this for so many years and you know, there's times where we're changing things up from day to day, but we sit down as a staff, we try to figure out what's going to be the best flow. What's going to be the best way for us to give an honest evaluation and, and, and see the most of these players. We're going to move on, move on to the next piece and Duke's going to cover the timeline and itinerary for tryout day. This is cool. Um, Coach Steve put this together, and it's exactly what we do at our tryouts from A to Z as we're going down the list. We're looking at this, and so this pretty much is a two-hour. In this exact uh, tryout, we had 73 kids at this tryout, and we're going to kind of go through what we did and how we do it. So the first things first, we – we ask the kids and the, the players to get there 15 minutes early. The reason for that is there's nothing worse than to go to a tryout and show up right on time and feel like you're rushed. You feel like you're, you know, you're putting your sneakers on, their cleats on, they're getting their glove, and they're not prepared. So we say get there 15 minutes early, and what we do is we give them all their T-shirts. So they come in, the player says their name. We already have it matched up to the T-shirt and the number, and we check them off. We also show the area and the coaches that are involved in the different areas of the trial. So after that's over, now we have the player and parent talk. We do that right in the beginning because the parents are all still there and the players are still there. So I'll go to the bleachers. I'll give my talk to the, to the parents and coach Steve gets all the kids around the pitcher's mound or the left field line. And he goes over their, uh, the player talk. So I'm going to let you in on a little bit of coach Steve's player talk right now. We're going to ask him to coach Steve, give us a little, give us get a little, a little pep talk. Oh, he's going to, he's going to talk about that later. So when you're giving your pep talk, you really want to get them prepared and ready to go for the parents. You want them to understand exactly what they can expect from the tryout, from the team, what they're signing up for. You don't want them to have any questions later on. Okay, so now let's dig in. So we just got done with that. So we do a dynamic warm up and we do our throwing program. So they head over to the left field line. We, like I said, had over 70 kids. So some were on the left field line, some were on the right field line, and we had our coaches uh, scattered around. After we get done with that, we get we break them up into three groups and then we go over the measurable numbers. We have our exit velocity in the cages, we have our running on the left field line. And we do our raw velocity at home plate. So we're actually going to show first the exit velocity video. And you're going to see in this video, we have the team genius. We have the pocket radar. We have a T and we have a player that's getting ready to hit the ball into the back of the net. So whatever space you have, that's what you're going to use. So here we go. We're going to show it right now. It's not. The exit velocity. What is it wrong? Velocity. No, I said exit velocity. Yeah. So you can see right here the batter is hitting the ball off the tee into the net. Here we go. We do it a couple of times so you can see. We have the stop. We have the uh, pocket radar. We have the tee. The batter is hitting driving it into the net and we are then recording it so that's what we do we do that about three or four times we have the app it tracks everything like coach steve said it then evaluates and puts all the analytics into the app the next thing we're going to show is we're going to show the raw velocity so here we go to home plate we get the player 
they take a ball, they crow hop and fire, they throw the ball into a backstop or into a net or to a coach, and we record that. Now we're trying to get arm velocity. They take a couple shuffles, they come up and they fire away and throw the ball as hard as they can. That's the raw velocity. So we're getting ready to show this a few times. You can see the guy at the bucket right there has the app. That guy has the app. We also have the pocket radar. Um, so everybody here is gauging it. They're watching it. They're recording it. One guy's watching their throwing mechanics. And then we're pretty much taking videos and recording everything that we have. Now, the third group was running. We go to the left field line. We get our cones. We get our dish, whether it's 60-yard dash, whether we see or it's a 5-10-5. A if you have a smaller area, it might be a 15-yard dash. Whatever you want to do, and we're going to get their running speed. So we're going to show a video on the running speed. Here we go. He's starting at first base. He's going to run to second, and he's going to go as fast as he can. And you'll see, again, we have a stopwatch. We have the Team Genius app. There's Coach Steve. He's got the stopwatch. There you see it. And the cool thing about the Team Genius, if you look at that picture, that picture shows the app. It has a stopwatch right on it. So when you stopwatch, start, stop, enter, it automatically goes right into the app. So those are the first three things that we record. And everyone will just go from the hitting to the throwing to the running and they'll rotate around. And as you can see, it happens pretty quickly. It happens in like 25 minutes. Smaller teams will probably be anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes. Um, the next thing we do is we do the outfield evaluation. So you'll see the next video where you can, whether you take a tennis racket and hit fly balls for the little ones, whether you take a pitching machine and you fire balls up into the air, here we are inside, but we're still using the machine and we're shooting fly balls. We're starting them pretty much in the infield, but you can put them as far as you want and do this again. You want to make it age appropriate and skill appropriate for your guys. So this is fun. Our coaches are looking at the players or watching them catch it. Maybe they get a point for catching it. And then we're looking at their form and we're seeing what they're doing. So that's that. That's that with the fly balls. Um, then we go right into our infield play. So we go into our infield evaluation. Now we can be taking fungos and whacking them on the ground. We can be taking a machine and hitting them on the ground. We can be rolling them for the little guys if we want on the ground. So here we go. We have a guy on the knee hitting a fungo. We have the players all at shortstop and they're making throws to first base. We have a coach right behind them, talking to them, helping them out, keeping them under control and having fun. Then we have the guys that are rating, recording, and putting everything in Team Genius. So it's calculating all the data. So we have right there, that makes everything fair as well, right? So we start with the comb. That's where the kid starts. So that way, when we hit the ball, we can see their range and all that stuff and try to make it as, as uh, consistent as possible. Now we're going to first base. We take our first baseman, we put them at first. We're hitting some ground balls to them. And we're also working on picks. Let's see if our first baseman knows the, the footwork around the bag. Let's see how their scoops are. Let's see how their picks are. Let's see how they move around. So we just stand at shortstop. We take out a bucket of balls and we just pepper some throws. Some we throw at them, some we throw to their sides, and some of them we throw into the ground. So here you go. That one he scoops. That one he catches and takes a good step with. So we're working on pretty much scoops, catching and seeing what they do. Next, we're gonna work on the catchers. So we're working on pop times. We're looking at to check out their throw. We're working on how fast is their handball exchange. And we're also gonna be working on blocking as well. So we're looking at a lot of different things with the catchers. Again, scale it down based on the age. If they're only seven, you're just hoping maybe that they just catch the ball. You're not worried about blocking too much. Maybe you're not working about, we're, worried about them throwing down but so now we're going to work with the catchers and this is what it looks like we start on the mound we throw the ball we have somebody at second there's coach steve he's got his app there was another guy i think that was coach mikey with the app and one's recording the pop times he's talking about their handball exchange 
exchange and breaking it down for the catchers in this. So we have a bucket of balls, keeping it quick, keeping it simple. All the catchers are geared up, and that's what we do for the catchers. Now we do our hitting evaluation. So the hitting evaluation, we go eight to 10 pitches. We're doing this on the field, but you can also do it in the batting cage. You can do it with front toss, soft toss. You can use smush balls. You can use wiffle balls. You can pretty much use anything you want that you feel you're going to use to help gauge the hitters. Now, you also with the app can figure out what you want to look for. Are you looking for just ball exit speed? Are you looking for consistency? So coach Eric right now is just taking a knee on the bucket. He's just peppering some balls, throwing strikes, and the hitters whacking line drives, and we're, we're seeing what they do. We also use the pocket radar for this as well. We want to see how consistent the hitter is with getting his maximum velocity. Is he hitting every ball? If he hits a ball 56 miles an hour, is 156 and 137 and 142, or is it 56, 54, 54, 56, to where he's barreling up balls and hitting good line drives? So we're looking for balance. We're looking for power. We're looking for consistency and all that good stuff. So that's what we're evading in the hitters. With the older guys, you give situational stuff. You want two balls, two opposite field, and then five swings. So whatever you want to do with your age players, that's perfect. And now we're going to go to the pitching, the pitching evaluation. The pitchers throw eight to 10 pitches in the bullpen. They're mixing in some change-ups. Uh, whatever pitches they have, uh, they'll talk to the coach and they'll fire away, right? We've already warmed up. We've already thrown. The pitchers now have had time to go over on the side, do their band work, get themselves ready. Now we have either a catcher from the tryouts or we have a net or we have one of the pitchers go over and excuse me, the catchers go over and catch the pitcher. So here you go right here. You're seeing the pitcher. He's throwing balls to the catcher. And what we're doing here is we have a guy behind home plate with the radar gun, just kind of seeing how hard he's throwing. We have another coach recording his, um, you know, how is he throwing? What are his mechanics like? Is there movement on the ball? They're going fastballs, change-ups, two seams, four seams, whatever the pitcher has. And so our coaches are getting a really good evaluation on all the players. Now, the reason for that is because you want to make sure that if you have to cut a kid or release a kid, you have as much information and as much data as you possibly can, which would help you pick your team, look at your team, and do that stuff. So that's pretty much the timeline the tryout timeline of what we do, how we do it, where we do it, and some videos to, to help show that. So now uh, Coach Steve's going to talk about the player and parent meetings. Yeah, real quick, just to touch on the, the stuff that Duke had just mentioned. I know we went through it kind of quick. We showed you videos on, on each segment. It's important that, that you assign a coach to not only rate the players, but then you also assign a coach to leave comments. And Duke touched on that at the end. The comments section is huge. Sometimes we'll have, you know, a couple sentences sometimes we'll have paragraphs you know we're talking um for each one let's let's just say infield right now they're getting six balls so they're getting two at them two forehand two backhand <clears throat> for the older guys sometimes we'll make it seven or eight and add in some slow rollers but we're constantly leaving leaving comments you know you know has 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 slow feet fields the ball deep you know doesn't create momentum towards first base um but is an athlete and we can really work with him. So we, we, we leave comments like that so that when we're going back through the eval and we're looking at these notes, you know, a lot of times I'll write, this kid's just a raw athlete. He just needs to be coached up a little bit, but he's fast. He's athletic. He's got a good arm. Those are the kind of comments that really help, you know, us as a staff, once we sit down the next day and say, man, if we can get with this kid for a couple of days and, you know, a couple of weeks and, and months of practice, he's going to be, he's going to be a good ball player. So really? those comments are huge. We got to make sure that we leave tons of comments. Again, pen and paper. We love Team Genius because it, comp it compiles it all for us. But the more comments, the better. Those are, those are just things that, that we're constantly looking for. Because if you just grade them, you know, one through five or A, B, and C, you know, there's so many kids coming in for tryouts. It's really challenging to look back and say, man, who was that kid? That's why when we're using Team Genius and we have the kid's picture, and then we have the ratings, and then we have the comments. You know, the measurable numbers are also good 
but I'm a big fan of, of, of the comments and writing down as much as I can. I'll write down comments on, on their body language. I'll write down comments on, you know, if they're hustling on and off the field, because those are all things that we take into account, you know, when we're put, picking the team. And we're going to touch on that a little bit, a little bit more later. Um, I'm going to move on to the player parent meeting. So this is what we do in the beginning. Coach Duke's going to talk to the parents. I'm going to talk to the players. It's really important during that time that, that Duke talks to the parents about the game plan for the day. All right. He's going to introduce himself. He's going to talk about the coaches he's got out on the field. He's going to talk about the, the game plan, um, who's going to be running what station. At that time, we always say, you know, when you see our coaches on their phones, they're not texting and ignore, ignoring the kids. They're just using Team Genius to, to, to rate the players. We talk about our, you know, our goals, our, our expectations. We give them a timeline. So, you know, for instance, if we're trying out on Saturday, we might say you'll hear from us by Wednesday or, or Tuesday, hopefully, you know, the earliest, but Wednesday, the latest. This way the parents have an idea as to when they're going to get some communication from us, good or bad. Um, we talk about the cost of the team. We, we talk about the plans for travel and what events we plan on going to the next year. Um, and then we take a Q&A because we want to make sure that the parents understand fully what uh, – you know, what's going to entail in, in accepting a spot on this team. We don't want to, you know, go through the process, evaluate their kids, do this big eval, sit down, pick the teams, and then call them, and they decide they don't want to travel yeah. or they decide that they don't want to play on the team because that's, that's a stressful thing for us. You know, we spend all this time picking the team. You select the kid, and then they turn it down. There's, there's nothing worse than that. There's nothing more frustrating than that. So we try to get it all out on the table in advance and let them know this is the cost, this is the travel, these are the days that we're practicing during the week, and these are the expectations. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can have an answer within, within 24 hours when, when your kid is selected for the team. Now, when I'm going through my, my player meeting down, down the left field line, it's a little bit different. We don't talk about all that stuff. Um, you know, we've all been through tryouts before. We've been nervous. We've been anxious. We, we start to freak out and feel like we've got to do all these things special. Um, so I'll get them down on a knee. I'll get on their eye level. And, and the message that I send to them is always, guys, we just want to leave it all out on the field today, right? You just want to be yourself. You want to slow the day down. You want to enjoy it and have fun, right? That's what baseball and softball are. Too many kids psych themselves out. An hour and a half later, they get in the car and go home and, you know, they're saying, man, I wish I wasn't nervous or I wish I wasn't, you know, freaking out or panicking because errors happen, right? They're, they might miss a ball. They might swing and miss. They might walk three batters in a row. That's baseball. That's softball. So the message that I send to them I get down on a knee, I introduce myself, I introduce the coaches, um, you know, and I just try to develop some sort of a relationship with them. Guys, we're going to take a deep breath. We're going to have fun today. We're going to be the hardest working kids here, right? And at the end of the day, um, you know, we want to see kids uh, fail a little bit too, because, you know, you can see a lot by the way a kid handles himself when he fails. Is he a good teammate? Is he picking kids up in the simulated game? Um, you know, is he throwing his equipment? Is he hanging his head? Does he, does he sulk after making an error? Those are all things that we take into account, um, you know, when, when we're picking our team and we're selecting those teams. But, you know, the, 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 the talk to the parents and the talk to the players is crucial, you know, before you start the whole evaluation, the whole tryout process. Coach Duke's going to move on now to the, uh, the detailed comments and evaluations. And again, we've touched on this a little bit, but, uh, you know, just, just to go through uh, who, who's assigned to what duties throughout the day and, um, you know, how important those comments and evals are. Yeah, we wanted to make sure that we made a specific slide for this because it's really important who you have do what jobs. You want to make sure that you assign coaches that know how to evaluate players, both good and bad. Write a couple good things. You're going to write a bunch of bad things, but as you're evaluating players, mix in a good thing here and there so that when the person that then has to talk to certain players, it's like, oh, he did this well. Well, he had a long swing, but he had good balance. Like, so there's something that uh, the player can get out of this when you are pretty much going through the evaluation. Because if a coach has never done an evaluation, you're going to get a lot of the same stuff. Long swing, chops down at the ball, lots of swings and misses. It's like, okay, does that mean the kid's good, not good? When he does hit the ball, is he smoking line drives and crushing balls? Is he swinging and missing everything? So you want to have some key things that you're looking for that that evaluator, when he says certain things, you know it's a lock or maybe it's a small circle or maybe it's a star because a lot of times when you look at evaluations, it's going to be a lot of negative things. So you maybe write a bunch of negative things about a kid that is really good, but you're evaluating it. So make sure that you do a couple trial runs on some kids prior to 
so that you guys are all on the same page as a staff. Um, you also want to make sure you're not rushing through this. This isn't how fast can I get through tryouts because you want to make sure you're not missing anything. If you didn't quite get the stopwatch right, have them run again. If something was wrong and you didn't get enough throws, like have them throw again. So make sure you have good, solid, quality data on every single kid because we've all been there before. You you want to make sure you're getting your, your full eight or ten swings, not, oh, I only got three swings and, you know, whatever. I got rushed off and we had the rotator or, or what have you. So also make sure the coaches are good at their jobs. Don't let a coach just run up there with a fungo just because he wants to. And next thing you know, he's whacking balls left, right, miss swinging and missing. And you're like, oh, my gosh, because it's very time consuming if you don't have the right guy or gal at the job. The second thing is making sure that whoever throws batting practice is good at it. It's because that will kill time, right? They're throwing fast to one kid, slow to another kid. If you can use a machine, use a machine. If you want to throw BP, throw BP. We sit on, especially with the younger ones, we sit on a, on a chair or we take a knee and we're throwing from the L screen just like this. We're not standing up from the mound, throwing 60 feet, six inches, trying to fire balls. So make sure you have the right people for the job. So Coach Steve's going to talk about this, and this is this is where it starts getting tough with the trial process, inviting back and making cuts on players. Yeah, it's, it's really tough, guys, to run a tryout in one day, right? There has to be an invite back day. So like I mentioned before, we, we run two days. Day one is going to be all of our new players. That's, that's guys that are trying out for our team for the first time. Um, and it's basically the, the evals like, like we mentioned before. So the raw velocity, the exit velocity, the running speed, um, you know, they're hitting comments, infield, outfield, first base, catching all the videos that we showed you before we do on day one. And, and basically our job for that day is to identify any kids that we feel have no shot of making the team. I know that sounds bad, but we want to eliminate those bottom tier players that we don't think are going to, are, are going to even have a shot of making the team at the next level. So what we do then we send out an email, we call, we offer an evaluation to those players because we want to give those kids, uh, you know, an opportunity to develop and get better. So one of our one of our coaches calls, we send a detailed email, and then we offer them an opportunity to come in, sit down, and go through their evaluation. Because that 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 kid, that player, eight, nine, ten years old, you know, still might have a shot to be be a good ball player down the road. <clears> but <throat> we need to provide them with a blueprint. We need to provide them with you know the tools or maybe the the ideas and and kind of the game plan moving forward to get to get better, right? Our, our job is not to just say, well, you didn't make our 10U team, see you later. It's you didn't make our 10U team, but here's what we need to improve on. This is how we're going to get you better. And let's make our, let's make the 11U team next fall. That's what, that's what our job as coaches is to do is to keep them playing the game, to get them to try out the next season. You know, and there's a team out there for everybody. It might be their rec team. It might be their little league team. Um, you know, but our job is to help those kids you know, develop that game plan to, to get better at those certain areas of the game that they struggle with. You know, we go over their eval, we show it to them, we sit down with their parents, and I, I know the parents and the players are very appreciative of that. So once we make those cuts, we invite back the players that we think have a chance. Now, this is where it gets a little bit long, because on day two, we play a simulated game. We take all the, the, the current players that we have, all of the new players that we have, and we might have a 15-inning game. Sometimes we've had an 18-inning game where each pitcher is going to throw to three or four batters. Everybody's going to get an opportunity to pitch that pitches. We have the, the innings laid out, like, a, like a, a sample lineup card that we use with Dominate the Diamond all the time, and every player is moving positions each inning. We have coaches spread out all over the field. We have one coach coaching each dugout, and uh, sometimes the lineups are 12, 15 guys long, but we make sure that everybody gets their three at-bats. We make sure everybody gets a chance to pitch, and we get, we get them an opportunity to play all the, the positions that they do you know, throughout the season. This is the time for us to really eval, right? We, we take comments. We put check marks next to the kids that are locks. We get to see them face some live pitching. We get to see them field balls off the bat. You know, we're watching the field, watching, you know, are they backing up bases? Are they hustling through first base? Do they dive for balls? Those are all the things that, that we as coaches want to see. We want to see that blue collar kid working really hard, you know, getting muddy, getting dirty, leaving it all out on the field. Um, you know, and then then it becomes challenging because from that point forward, we've got to sit down and we've got to, you know, select the top 12, top 24, sometimes out of, out of 40 kids. But, um, you know, th those long days on the field and those long 
simulated games really gives us a good idea of who can play. And you'd be surprised because there's a lot of kids that can take, you know, great batting practice in the cage. Then you put them out on the field against a live pitcher and it's a completely different kid. But that's why we have to do that invite back day. Um, for you coaches out there that are, you know, starting a new team or maybe looking to, you know, to, to make a travel team out of the little league, you know, uh, you know, making, making a, an organizational's first team, you don't have to have that invite back with the current players. We just invite back all the good players that we thought have a chance. And then we do that same simulated game. So it's going to be a little bit different than what we do because we have teams already. But if you're starting a team for the first time or you're doing a travel team with your town, do day one as, as eval day, invite back the kids you think have a chance and then do a simulated game. You want to see them in that, you know, live action, getting live at bats, seeing balls off the bat, you know, hustling, making plays and actually playing the game because uh, there's definitely a difference between those kids that uh, might show out on the, the day where they can hit the ball 100 miles an hour, but they can't make contact when the, when the pitch is being thrown to them. So that's just something that we do. It gets very long, but it's, uh, it's priceless. We, we, we have to do yeah. it year in and year out. We're going to move on to the next slide here, and that is actually picking the team. And that's, uh, you know, we call it tryout week. It turns into tryout month every single year because it takes forever. But, uh, you know, it's something this slide is, is important when, uh, you know, you're sitting down as a staff making those selections. You know, picking the team is like Halloween and you're picking pumpkins. It's like I got four kids, a wife, and six of us go to the pumpkin patch. And it's like I go to the one, I'm like, man, this thing is perfect. It's round. It's big. It's exactly what I want. And then my son's like, no way. I want this one. It's tall and skinny. And then I have my wife saying, oh, I want this. And it's like you have six different pumpkins. That's what it's like picking a team right? You have different coaches looking for different things, looking for different types of players. I like a fast team. Coach Steve might like a, a team that hits for power. Coach uh, Eli might like a team that, you know, is loaded with pitching. So you have to, as an organization and as a staff, know what you're looking for with your team. So when you sit down, you have to make sure you have the right people in the room with the right mindset and similar mindset to help you pick the teams. We get the dry erase boards out. We get all 10 dry erase boards out. We get the pens, we get the erasers, and we just start going to town. We make sure that we have enough pitching. So we're looking for eight pitchers. We're looking for two catchers. We're making sure that we have our five infielders. We're making sure that we have our four outfielders. So we're pretty much making sure that we have enough players in all the positions to make a team. So many times you have enough kids, but you don't have enough positions. If you have nine shortstops, but you have zero catchers trying out and nobody wants to catch, you don't have a team. And that makes it challenging sometimes for organizations that are trying to make another team and they have a lot of kids and you're hoping you can really put together a good solid team. So that's why it's so important that you take a look and you you get the evaluations and you make sure the catchers and you're looking through all the different positions and where the kids play. So it's super, super important. Um, like coach St Steve said on here, make sure you have enough pitching, make sure you have enough catching, be aware of attitude, hustle, body language, teamwork, you know, coach Steve and I, when we did our, our exit interviews with our kids this year, we don't just go based on batting averages and earn run averages and errors the first five things we go over, how was he as a teammate? How was his bounce back? How was his attitude? How was his effort? How was his hustle? Those things are so important when you're looking at a player because a player can hit 316, but he's a horrible teammate and has a horrible attitude. Then I have a guy that maybe hit 285, but man, is he a good teammate. He hustles on the field. He makes the team great. Those are the things that you're looking for. So like Coach Steve said, that's why we have that second day. One guy's just watching everybody on the field. How are they playing the game? You get the evaluations on day one. Day two is let's see what they're like. Let's see, are they giving high fives to their teammates? Are they, are they being a good teammate? And then we're working on picking the teams and going through that. So like Coach Steve said, it takes a long time. You're putting names on there. You're going through the evals. With Team Genius, you can print out the entire eval for all the players and you can get all the player notes. So I can see what all the notes that Mikey put down for the pitchers, all the notes that Steve put down for the infielder. So you're not just going, hey, remember number 15? I think he was kind of fast 
and me. And you're like, two of the guys are like, I don't even remember what number 15 looked like. So in Team Genius, the first thing we do is we take the kid's picture. So now you're like, oh, that kid. I remember that kid. Number 15, that, that's who we're looking for. So it's really being paying attention to the details. So when the time comes to pick the team, you have as much information as you possibly can. We're going to add the Team Genius again, the, uh, the link on there. Take a look at it. Sort through it. It makes it so much easier. And then when you're talking to the players, you have something tangible that you can look at, a piece of paper that you can evaluate and go over, opposed to, yeah, you know, Johnny, just you didn't hit that well. Uh, he, it's like it's horrible to be a coach and in tryouts and have to talk to a, a parent that, of a player that you cut and have no real feedback. So we make sure that we have very good feedback very detailed and we just think that's very important so uh one one thing that i'll add in um you know it's really important to just be just be honest right honest with with the players that are not making the team and also honest with the players that are making the team right when we're when we're talking roster size we have 12 maybe 13 players max our our job is not to have 16 kids on a roster so we got seven kids sitting the bench we have you know 12 maybe 13 if we have enough to, to form two teams, we'll have two teams. But we're not going to just put together two teams just to have 24 guys in our, our in our organization at that age group. <laughs> we'll have 24 teams because or 24 kids because that second team is going to be a good team, right? We have we have two teams in our organization at each, uh, at certain age groups, elite and select. It's not A and B. It's elite and select. Um, and the reason we call it elite and select is because we don't consider our our select teams B type teams. Right. They might play a little bit of a different schedule. They might have, uh, you know, some kids that might need some more work as opposed to the elite team. But they're still going to go out there and they're going to compete week in and week, uh, week in and week out. Um, you know, when you're talking to the parents too, um, be honest in, in, in your evaluation of the player and where you see them going. These are difficult conversations we go through every single year. You know, when you tell a parent, um, you know, we selected your son for for our select team which is our second team, B team, a, a lot of parents like, like to consider it. Um, I would much rather have a player batting third, starting at shortstop on our second team, getting developed, right? Getting innings on the field, than be the 13th, 14th, or 15th guy on the top team and stick stuck out in right field, you know, never batting, being a substitute. Because the ultimate goal at, at that age, and a lot of the ages of, of people that we talk to, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, these kids have to play. They have to develop and get better and, and be in the lineup and get at bats and be out there getting balls, you know, on defense. Being a, a, a top team or an elite team player at 12U just to say you're on the team is not beneficial for anybody. So yeah. those are the, the difficult conversations you have to have sometimes. Um, you know, we do it in the best interest of the player. We might have, you know, four stud catchers. Well, that means two of them are going to be on our second team. It's not because they're not good. It's not because, you know, we don't see them as A players or, you know, guys that are going to play varsity in college baseball one day. It just so happens that at that age group, we have four really good catchers. So now we're going to try to build two really good teams around those guys. Um, but be honest, you know, be up front. Uh, don't, don't take too many kids on your roster just because you're trying to, you know, get more kids in the organization. You know, put kids in, in spots that where you feel like they're going to they're gonna develop the best. They're going to make the most of, of, of that season and they're going to continue to progress because at, at the end of the day, some, sometime down the road, they're going to be told they're not good enough anymore. They're going to get cut from a team. They're going to get released from a, from a major league organization one day. So we want to put these kids in, in, in a spot where they're going to develop, they're going to get better, and they're going to continue to play year in and year out. Um, you want to get into some questions? We got a, we got a couple, couple questions and comments in there. Um, yeah. If you guys have not left questions up until this point, please do. If you have anything, I mean, it could be roster size. It could be, you know, yeah, evaluating yeah. players. What, whatever you got for us, we're here for you. So this is this will be our Q&A portion. So the first one, the first question says, does the app record all coaches simultaneously? Yes. Steve and I can both be recording the same kid at the same time. We can be putting notes for the same kid at the same time. So we have all, we had all 11 evaluators that were at that tryout, all recording at the same exact time. We have a code, and that's what gets you in. All the kids' names are already in there, and you're clicking on the player, clicking on the skill set, and you're uh, we're rocking out from there. So I love the Montgomery County question right there. 
one of our issues is that each coach scores evals different from one another. Yeah. That's, you know, I mean, that's a great question right there. And we go through the same thing. So, um, you know, what we try to do here is we assign a coach that uh, might have more experience in that certain position, right? So, for instance, Duke and I are infield and hitting guys. So we're always going to evaluate the infielders and the hitters. Duke might, might rate them on, on our scale one to five, and I might make comments. My brother Mike is a pitching guy. So he's going to be the guy that's constantly evaluating and leaving comments. That doesn't mean he has to sit there with a the radar gun and record. We might use one of our of our younger coaches or, you know, a guy that works with outfielders, he might sit there and actually record the, the, the velocity, you know, the location, how many strikes is he throwing. But we take a guy that, uh, you know, is very experienced in that, in that skill set, and we make sure that that's their focus during tryouts. Um, you know, it, yeah, it happens good. though. Guy, guys evaluate differently and they score differently because they're looking yep. at different things. Um, but that's what makes the comment section great. Yeah. Because, you know, we can then sit down and say, all right, well, you might have rated him a five, but these are my com comments on him, and these are Duke's comments on him, and <laughs> they don't really add up to a five. So that's why the comments and, yeah. you know, the video portion's huge. I take a ton of video throughout tryouts. You know, if there's a borderline kid, we might take our phone out and just snap a video of him throwing or snap a video of him, you know, mm -hmm. facing live pitching just to have something else to go back and look at. Um. There's another one here that I like that says, do you have recommendations on how to advertise the tryout? Yes, I mean, you can send email blasts out, but there are tons of Facebook groups. Like you can go on New Jersey Travel Baseball Facebook groups and join those or post those or say, looking, looking for a 12U player for our team tryouts. Um, that's a really good way of, because there's Facebook groups on everything um there's different other websites that you can go on uh there's like new jersey baseball association you can go on there and there's all different little uh bulletin boards and stuff so i think i would i would attack the facebook groups first because there's there's so many of those and people are on there and they're looking and they're looking for that stuff or you can you can even post on the town's facebook page you know if it's bridgewater baseball well on bridgewater baseball's facebook page you can put hey having tryouts you know ask for from ask for permission first but that's a really good way to uh you know to advertise for some tryouts we've got a good one here and i think a lot of people are probably thinking this or at least have gone through it but do you have anyone watching parents and taking them into consideration love it i love that one every single year and and um maybe not so much just at the tryout you know if there's that one dad that's we call them helicopter parents that are standing right by the on deck circle and they're yelling out at the field. That definitely throws up a red flag. But, um, you know, we take that into consideration when we're picking the teams from year to year. You know, if we've had a parent in the organization that's just an absolute nightmare, you know, it, it stinks because we don't want that to affect the kid. We might love the kid. We might love having him in the organization. But if the parent's a nightmare and, he, you know, they're dividing the, 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 the other parents on the team, they're constantly complaining, they're screaming and yelling at umpires. They're arguing with the coach. You know, they're screaming out at their player constantly on the field. It makes it tough for us as coaches. So it's something that, unfortunately, we do go through. And I, I'm sure every single one of you guys on here has gone through it at some point. But, yeah, I mean, we, we have a rule once you are on our team. Um, we have a parent-player player code of conduct that the, the parents have to follow. We have a 24-hour rule to where parents can't go and confront a coach right after game, right after game time. They have to wait 24 hours. You know, they're not allowed to be in, in or around the dugout. They can't be standing by the on-deck on deck circle screaming out at their players. Um, but, yeah, that's just yeah. a struggle that we go through. And it's a good question because it's definitely something that we take into consideration when picking, picking the teams, unfortunately, because yeah. we don't want, you know, that their parents' behavior to reflect the player. I like this one. Uh, Coach Joe says, do you guys move a player up from select to elite during the season based on performance? Uh, through a certain point, you know, yes and no, because each team has a set roster of 12 players on each team. So you don't want to go 13 and 11, but there will be tournaments where, Hey, maybe they need another pitcher. Maybe somebody got hurt or maybe they're not going to be there. And that player can definitely play with those guys. We'll absolutely move them up and, you know, to play the weekend and to fill a spot. Um, but I think it, I think it just depends on different organizations. We don't do it 
to the extent of just moving them and saying, okay, this is now your team. Cause again, now you have 13 kids and 11 kids, but we like to be able to move our guys if we need, you know, coach Steve and I both have a 17 U team. And if I'm playing one weekend and Steve's not, and I need a guy, coach Steve's team guy plays on my team and vice versa. Maybe I'll have a catcher that will go up onto his team to help him out for that weekend. So I think it's, it's great for the players to know in the organization that I'm not in this one spot and I can't go anywhere. You want them to develop, get better and feel like they can definitely move because we've had tons of guys that moved up in the organization or down. We had a guy at uh, 10 and 11, U was on the select team on at 12, U on the select team 13. And now he's going to, to play the division one college. Like it's all depends on when they develop and, and what happens. But we always make a, we try to make a point to say, Hey, this is might might be where you are this season, but the fall's right around the corner. And then the summer's right around the corner. So keep working hard and keep playing hard. I was just, I was just going to touch on that because uh, there is so much shuffling from year to year. Kids will get bumped up. Kids will get bumped down. So it's also making, uh, you know, those, those kids on the elite team, you know, feel not comfortable from year to year. It's not like, oh, well, I'm on the elite team. I'm going to be on the elite team next year. No, you've got to work because you've got 12 guys on that select team that are, that are doing whatever they can to catch up to you, right? So you, as an elite player, we send the message that you have to separate that gap, right? If you're here and that player's here, well, he's trying to catch you. You have to do whatever you can and continue to work and develop. And uh, that, that was just a great example by Duke of one of our guys that the, the parents understood early on that the select team was the right spot for him because he was the starting shortstop. He was able to develop. He got his at bats. You know, when he worked his butt off, eventually made the elite team, and and now he's going to play in college. So, uh, you know, a lot of the times hearing some news that you don't like at a young age mm -hmm. is going to do one of two things. You're either going to quit and go play lacrosse or go play soccer, or it's going to motivate you to outwork all the people around you. And, um, you know, again, our goal is not to make 13 U elite. It's to play varsity, to play in college one day. And that kid understood it. The parents understood it. He was in the right spot. And, uh, you know, he was eventually the starting shortstop on the elite team. And, and now he's going to play in college. So those are the stories that you love to hear. And, you know, some of those guys that do get told that they're on the B team or the select team early on in, in their, uh, in their career end up outshining all the other guys because they get comfortable, yeah. they get complacent, mm -hmm. and they sit around and wait. You know, another thing I wanted to, I wanted to mention is that everything that you're seeing today, whether it's the, uh, the PowerPoint or the videos or the team genius link, we'll make sure that everybody that was on today, we'll make sure that we send you the, the PowerPoint. We'll send you all the stuff that you listen to and watch today. We'll make sure that we send that. So be on the lookout for that. Um, keep the questions coming. We love the questions. We want to help as much as we possibly can. And one of the one other thing that I was thinking of when Coach Steve was talking about, you know, when, we're, when we cut players and that sort of thing, as parents, I want you to think what happens and what do you think when your son gets cut? What are you going to do if your son gets cut? What are you going to do if your son makes the second team instead of the first team. Those are all questions that a lot of times we don't think about until after the fact. And then we just react. Oh my gosh. Well, then, then you're not playing. We'll, we'll go try out somewhere else. Or instead of going, okay, he made the second team. Let's work hard. Let's get back on the eight. If you love the organization and we like the coaches, this is where we're staying. Opposed to, oh, you didn't make it. Let's go make another eight team or let's go. So, you know, just, just think about that as a coach, what that parent is going through when their son's getting cut. So be delicate. It's a delicate situation. It has to happen. But just, you know, put yourself in their shoes because, uh, you know, nobody likes to do it. We always say it's the best time of year and the worst time of the year. We get new Red Hawks. We get, you know, we get 175 kids. It's so exciting. But you have to cut 130 kids. Like that's the worst thing ever. It's the worst feeling uh, it's just the worst conversations and we've all been there before, but man, there, there, there's nothing easy about it. Like coach Steve said, communicate, 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 have a bunch of data, make that kid feel good still. Hey, Mikey, you didn't make the nine U team, but man, you did this. Well, we got to work on this. Let's work hard this off season and get you a better baseball player. Well, that's a good way of cutting a kid and making them feel like, okay, I don't have to stop playing and I stink and I'm, I'm not good. No. Here's what you did well. Here's some things we got to work on and let's keep on going. 
Like, yeah. make them feel good in a situation where you're not going to feel good either. So you might as well both feel like you're, I mean, feel a little good. Yeah. We've got a few more questions here. Nick had one. I know we touched on it a little bit. What's the roster size you guys carry on a 12U team? Typically, how many are pitchers? So I mentioned earlier, we carry 12 max 13 players per roster. Um, and ideally, we have eight or nine pitchers on there. You know, the more pitching, the better, depending on the schedule. But we'll do a lot of tournaments, especially during the summer. So you need at least eight pitchers. Um, and that's definitely something we take into account when we're picking the teams. Um, we had another one from, uh, I can't see it, from another coach. How, how do you communicate to players that are trying out if anyone's interested in, in pitching or catching? So uh, when we use Team Genius, um, we'll have all of their positions laid out next to their name. Um, also, you know, when we're planning the tryout, when kids register for our tryout, they'll write down their primary position and their secondary position. And a lot of times at the younger ages, it's, you know, shortstop, pitcher, first base, catcher. They play all over the place. So, um, you know, being, being able to play <clears throat> multiple positions makes that player more valuable. Um, you know, it's something that, uh, that we, we have in advance of the tryout. So we know, so then when we go out and do that simulated game, we make sure that they play all those positions. But it's also something that we, we communicate with the parents when we're selecting the team. Sometimes we'll call and say, you know, we saw you just tried out as, as a shortstop and a pitcher. Do you play anywhere else? And sometimes the kid's going to say, yeah, I, I can play center field. I can play first base. They'll play all over the place. But, um, you know, finding those kids when you're selecting a team that can play all over is just going to help your team that much more when, when the season comes. Um, another thing, I like this one, Coach Todd. You have players from the current team try out with the new prospects or use their data from the season. We use their data as far as not having them come day one when we're doing the evals and stuff like that. But what Coach Steve touched on that is that during the game, we want them to play with the, uh, with the prospects and the new guys because now you can have your, your main guys throwing against the other guys that you think might be able to play on the, on the top team and they're facing each other because it's just important. We think that as an organization, you want the best kids to be playing with the best kids. New kids are going to be trying out. So it's not just the same kids playing on the same team no matter what. They all have to try out and they all have to, you know, battle it out. So we do give an advantage, I would say, to the kids that played with us in the past. We do have a track record, how they hit, how they pitch at it. So maybe they did they didn't have a good tryout, but we know they're good and they've been good for three seasons. Absolutely, we take that into consideration. But we do want to make sure that if a guy deserves a spot, uh, we do do that. Yeah. What software or apps you use to communicate parents, coaches, and players? We love Team Snap. We use Team Snap. There's league apps. Um, Team Snap, we've been using that probably for 12 years. And it's just, it doesn't do uh, everything. Like league apps are, are very robust from, you know, scheduling to taking payments to having apps. Team Snap is just a very simple coach to player, coach to parent. You can text. You can change venues. You can send alerts. You know, kids go on there and team chat each other. So it's called Team Snap. We really like that. That's a, you know, that's a very good app for, you know, that real quick for communications. It's user-friendly. We love that one. Definitely. Coach Josh asked, do you encourage multi-sport participation or only baseball year-round? Um, we are big fans of multi-sport athletes. And we actually break our season up into a spring-summer season. And then the fall is completely separate. And the reason we do that is because we have so many football players in our organization. Um, I was a three-sport athlete growing up. Duke was a three-sport athlete. And there's so many benefits. I mean, we could go on a, on a rant right now about the added benefits of playing basketball or playing football and, you know, learning how to be coached in, you know, a different style from somebody new. You know, all the, um, the athleticism you learn from, from basketball, the toughness, the grittiness, being part of a team from being a football player. So, we really push our guys to, to be multi-sport athletes um, as long as they possibly can. And I think when you look at the highest of levels, you watch guys in the major leagues, so many of them were multi-sport athletes growing up. Um, you know, there's so many benefits. So, yeah, we definitely push our guys to do that. And the reason that we run our program the way we do is we break it up seasonally so that that gives them the opportunity for those guys yeah. that play baseball spring and summer. Well, they go play football in the fall and We'll catch up with you in November as soon as football season's over. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we even go out and watch him play sometimes. Duke's son plays football, so he's at the football games constantly. And then he'll be with us in the spring and summer. So great question. I know a lot of uh, organizations run into those issues. And it's tough because then 
players feel like when they're trying to balance both at the same time, they're going to make somebody unhappy, right? They're going to yeah. let somebody down. So those football players, they say, yeah, well, I can guess with you on the weekend. More times than not, it doesn't work. We just tell them, go play football. You know, we'll see, see you when the season's over. Last question. We have another question. Would genius be a functional tool in a high school program? 100%. We like it even more for the older guys because you can get real detailed with the evaluations, you know, and you can also evaluate certain, certain things. So you can break it up accuracy, speed, consistency, like mechanics, everything and anything you can think of. So no matter how old you are, that uh, the app allows you to, pretty much put in everything and anything you can imagine into it. So, and the thing that, again, we like about that is you can give reports. So if they're high school kids at the end of the season, boom, here's your detailed report on the season, how you did, here's your new evaluation. Here's your new, um, you know, measurables. So you can match up from fall to summer. And now you're going and you're kind of creating that, uh, that report card as they go. So player development plan. So we, we, we really, uh, we really think it's for everybody. So we're super happy. I mean, we're, we're glad that you tuned in. We're glad you asked so many awesome questions. There's so much that we could talk about with Travis, but we're, we hope that, you know, we did a very good job of uh, trying to give you the blueprint to master your next, tri next tryout, make it easy, make it efficient, give you some of the measurables, give you the tools, the videos. Um, we'll also be putting on there, a almost like a like an evaluation card we'll be, we'll try to pull out an evaluation card to be like here's the card that you want this is what the registration link should look like you know yeah. that sort of thing and have fun with the t-shirts i know it's it's cheaper just putting numbers on but you can find a cheap t-shirt a seven dollar t-shirt that the kid gets to come in with get his number and walk out of there it's just a it's just a cool thing so um Thanks again, Coach. Do you have anything to, to yeah, wrap up with? I was just going to say you saw our blueprint, um, but there is no, you know, cookie cutter way of doing it, right? You can you can get creative with your tryouts, and uh, you know some some teams I know like to do it for three or four days. There's nothing wrong with that either. Um, this is just the the way that we've done it for a while, and it works for us. But um, as long as you're prepared, you talk to your coaches in advance. Um, you know, you're organized the day of of the tryout. Um, you know, you do a very good job communicating with the players, with the parents. Um, you know, and, and you're honest with, with, with your feedback and, and your timeline as to when or, whether or not they're going to make the team, um, you're, you're, you're going to be in, a good, in good shape. But, um, you know, be detailed, leave comments, and definitely offer your, your players an opportunity to sit down for an evaluation afterwards. I think that's, that's one of the biggest things that we do. Um, and it allows those kids to, again, come up with a blueprint moving forward to, to better their game, you know, better their skill set. So the next time tryouts comes around, they have a much better shot of making the team. Make sure that you watch us. You can you can catch our videos on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. We're all over. We have a YouTube channel, Dominate the Diamond. Pretty much Dominate the Diamond is all of our tags. Um, make sure you go on our homepage. You can subscribe to our newsletter. We have blogs on there probably two to three times a week, and it gives a lot of good information um, that you can follow. We have over 900 videos on there. We're going to add our membership. You can get our membership free for seven days and it has everything. It has our templates, our parent code of conduct. It has all 22 of our baseball and softball courses on there. And it's just a great way to really dig in and see what we do. You can go onto our app and you can take us right on the field with you. If you want to know how to do the trout, you can pull up the trout video right there in your hand and take a look at everything that we have. So download the app, get our stuff. and. Uh, Coach Steve. Awesome. Yeah, last question, just because we got we got to all of them except one. Do coaches stay with a team or stay with an age group? Um, I think it just depends from year to year. You know, we have certain coaches at the older at the older age group that do a very good job with with recruiting and college placement and you know, kind of guiding them through that process. So we'll have a group of coaches that stay stays at that age. But we also like uh, you know, at the younger ages, you know, my brother Mike coached our 10U team and now he's gonna be with the 11U team and kind of working with them through that progression. Sometimes it changes when they get to the big field. Um, so I think it, it all depends on, yeah. you know, who specializes in what age group, who does really well with that younger age, who's a really good coach for that 13 U group when they move up to 60, 90 and, you know, it becomes real baseball and the new rules and the new size of the field and the new positioning. So um, again, it depends from year to year. I, I've been fortunate to stay with my team for a while now, um, you know, but we have a recruiting team and 
We have guys that are very good at that 16, 17, and 18 year old range. And then we have guys that are really good at the young age. So sometimes we'll pass them off. Sometimes we'll stay with them. I think it just depends on, uh, on who the coach is and what they're good at. Great question though. Thank you. Coach Steve, I got one last question. Did I make your team? You made the team. Yes. You made the team. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy your next tryout. Coach Duke, Coach Steve with Dominate the Diamond. Go dominate your next tryout. See you next time. Thanks so much. Have a great night.